In this video, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to create an online store using Hostinger. We're gonna be covering all the basics in this tutorial from getting a website online to choosing the right theme for your business to adding in the products, editing the layouts using the drag and drop builder, setting up the shipping zones and your payment gateways so you can accept payments online. So by the end of this tutorial, you'll have a fully functional mobile responsive e-commerce website. And you can create any type of store that you want with up to 500 products. You can sell physical products such as clothing or jewelry. You can also sell digital products such as software or PDF eBooks. And you can even create virtual products. For example, if you're selling services or consultation calls. You can also add a appointment functionality as well if you wanna create a website, for example, for a hairdresser. So the main benefit of using Hostinger to create an online store is that it's extremely affordable compared to other platforms such as Shopify and Squarespace and Wix. And it's also extremely easy to use and manage when you compare it to WordPress and WooCommerce. So if you're not sure which platform to choose yet, then I recommend watching this video and checking it out yourself and then you can decide. By the way, my name is Hogan and I'm really excited to actually show you guys how to get started. We've also got all the contents and the timestamps in the description below if you wanna to skip to any section. So without much further ado, let's jump on the computer to get started. So to get started, you can click the first link in the description below this video and that's gonna take you to this discount page that hosting I have created for our viewers, basically saving a little bit more on the web hosting plans. So here we've got three plans to choose from. You've got the premium, business, and the cloud startup. So generally I do recommend the business plan because you do get the most for your money. You get increased performance in terms of the website loading times. You also got more storage as well as the NVMe storage. And you also get daily backups. You got the free professional email, free domain name, and you've also got all the features for the managed WordPress. For example, if you do decide to switch to WordPress, um, you can actually do that as well in the hosting uh, um, control panel area. And of course, we've got the no code website builder, which we're gonna be using to create our online and e-commerce store. So it has the e-commerce features included and 0% transactions and yeah, everything that you need to create a website. So for the cloud startup, generally I don't really recommend it for most beginners because it is a little bit more expensive but you do also get sort of increased performance as well. So it's great for people who do have the budget. Perhaps you are getting traffic to your website already, or you just want a faster website. So I'm gonna go ahead and select the business plan and click on add to cart. So scrolling down over here, we need to choose a period. Generally, I recommend 12 months or longer. So the main difference here is that for a longer term, you get a cheaper price per month and it also renews at a cheaper rate. So generally I don't recommend going for the month to month plan because if you actually choose this one, and let's say for example, you get it for 12 months. So 14 times 12, that's $168. And if you actually get the 48 month plan one, I don't think it's much difference. So for this one, you, it's only $184 and you're getting four years worth of web hosting. So generally I recommend 12 months or longer. For this tutorial, we're gonna select this. So we're gonna scroll down over here. So enter in your email and your password to create an account, or you can actually use your Google or Facebook. Scrolling down over here, you can enter in your name and your details and scroll down. Then we can enter in a coupon code. So click on have a coupon code and you can enter in Hogan and then Chua, C-H-U-A and click on apply and hopefully that's gonna give you a bigger discount on your plans. So over here, just put in your credit card details and once you're done, just click on submit secure payment. So don't worry, that's not my real credit card number, so don't use that one. Okay, so let's click on start now. And I'm just gonna click on skip, I don't want a personalized experience. And I'm gonna create a new website, so click on select. So over here, you have a choice to choose WordPress or the hosting and builder. We're gonna be using this builder over here. So we're gonna click on select. And on the left, we're gonna claim our free domain name. So we're gonna click on select and scrolling down over here. So to choose a domain name, you can go to namelix.com to get some ideas for your business name. And I'm just gonna put in the keywords modern furniture and then click on generate. And here I might just choose auto and click on next. And 
and I might choose high, click on next, and then click on generate. Okay, so this one sounds not too bad, Contempo. So I might try this, it probably won't be available, but let's just give it a go. So over here, Contempo, and here we can choose the extension. So normally I'd go for a .com, you might go for a shop one, sometimes people go for a sort of like a modern one, sometimes a little bit more fun as well. So I might just choose the .store domain over here. Let's click on search. Okay, so it is available. So I might just pick this one and click on continue. And over here, I'm just gonna enter in my details, click on next step. Once you're done, just click on finish registration. Okay, so now what we could do is click on use pre-made templates on the bottom here. And before we actually get started, I do recommend going back to your inbox and just verifying your emails from Hostinger. So you might need to verify the contact uh, information here. So let's click on that one, scroll down, click on this link to just verify that. Okay, and let's click on back over here and I'm just gonna verify my email as well. So once you've verified your email, you may be redirected to the HPanel area of Hostinger. So this is basically where you control your websites, hosting emails, and your billing information. So what we're gonna do is click on websites, and to edit your website that you just purchased, we're gonna click on edit website. So we also have the window open from previous, so I might just start from here. And here we have all the fully customizable website templates. So I'm gonna click on e-commerce because we're gonna be creating an online store. And here we can go through the different templates and you can check which one is more suitable for your business. And if you like one, you can also click on preview to see how that website looks and click on start building. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on back over here and click on e-commerce again. And then I'm gonna start off using this template. So I recommend starting off and following this template over here and then later on you can switch to whichever one that you like. But you can create any type of website after you've selected the template. So click on select, click on change template. So if we go back over here, if you did click on the edit website, it would also redirect you to the builder of your website, okay? So if you ever want to edit your website, basically you'll need to log in to the hosting and HPanel area and navigate to the website over here and then click on edit website. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and close this for now. So over here, we have the setup progress. Basically, you can actually click into one of these ones and it's gonna redirect you and sort of walk you through, give you a little tutorial on how the builder works. But I'm actually gonna show you guys everything you need to know. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start off by editing the top, okay? so. On the top here, this is the header section. So if we click onto it, we can click on edit header. And here we can change the layout. So do you wanna make the header as sticky? Basically what that means is your header will stay there on the top. So what you can do is you can select the setting over here. You can click on preview. And if we scroll down, basically as you can see the header sticks there and that's your sticky header. So let's click on back over here. So let's click on header again, edit header. And here we can also change the menu item spacing. Do you wanna increase the space? You can also change the spacing of the header as well. So this is the padding. So if we increase it, it's gonna increase. Let's just pull it down to about 18 pixels. Here we can click on logo and you can upload your logo here. Let's click on replace image, upload files and we can choose the files from our computer. So I'm just gonna copy and select all my files that I've pre-created and click on open. So I'm just gonna upload them all onto my website. And here we're gonna select the logo. So for your logo, I recommend um, downloading a PNG file, basically a transparent file without any sort of background color on it. So basically it's gonna look good on the background here. So here we can also edit the logo width. So we can change it to make it bigger or smaller. I might just change it to around, 80, around 88. 
So for the logo position, we can change that, okay? And let's click on the shopping bag style so you can change the shopping bag style here. Click on edit header. And we can also click on the style. So for the style, we can change the header background color. You can also make it a transparent background as well. And you can also change the font as well as the header text. So just wanna make sure that everything is visible when you actually change the colors. So let's click back on the logo and I'm gonna change the logo position back to the left hand side. And then you wanna click on save to save the settings that you made. So before we go any further, to actually change a template, if you don't like this template, we're gonna click on the menu item on the top left hand side, click that. And from here, under change design, we can click on choose a template. So this is basically how you can actually select another template and switch this one over here, okay? So let's click on close over here. So to edit this section, it's quite simple as well. We can just click it and we can also click on edit text and you can change the text. So for example, free shipping on orders over $100. So here we can change the style of the text, the font, the sizing, and you just have the basic word editing, formatting uh, items over here as well. For example, linking it, making it bold, italic, and things like that. And we can also click on the section. So you can click on the section over here, okay? And click on edit section. And here we can change the background color too. So you can select the website color like this, or you can pick one from the color picker. And if you like it, we can just leave it. And you can also add an image as the background too. So let's click on close. So scrolling down over here, we have another section. So this is the hero image with the hero text. And this basically showcases what you sell on your website. So to edit this section, you can click this section and then click on edit. And here we can go ahead and change the image. So we're gonna click on replace image. And then we can select an image. So if you don't have an image of your products, then you can actually use the free image feature over here. And it basically pulls images from Unsplash where you're able to use these images for free. But I do recommend uploading your own images which are specific to your own e-commerce brand. So we're gonna go ahead and click on my library again and select this image. And that basically just changes your image. So what we could do now is, as you can see, the text is not very visible. So you wanna change the overlay opacity. So you might wanna boost it up a little bit to maybe, let's say 30%. And that basically just enhances that white text on the background and makes it more visible. So it's very, very important for a great user experience. And you can also select a fixed background which gives it sort of like a parallax scrolling effect, which is quite nice. And then we can just click on close over here. So to edit the text over here, we can click into it and just click on edit text. And again, it just works like a normal word editor, just select the text and we can just change it. So online store, maybe we could do create and online store. And if you want to move text, you can also click it and you can just drag it, okay, like that. And we're going to stop it there. And let's move the button too, like that, okay. And we can also click on edit button. So here we can change the button text, for example, make it capitals. Here we can select where we want that button to link to. So we can click on the drop down. And we can link it to a specific website address where you can put in the URL, or you can link it to a file download, like a PDF. You can also link it to a section as well. Okay, so you need to name the section. So for example, let's say we scroll down over here and we click this section, edit section, click on anchor. And here we select the anchor name. So we just do news letter, close. Scroll back up over here to the button, edit button. And for the section, we can select here. Okay, and it's gonna scroll down to the newsletter section if we actually click there, okay? So here, I'm just gonna link it to perhaps all my products, like that. And you can also change the style. So you can change the 
button background color. So fill color, we can change it to purple, change the text color to white. Then we can also change the hover color too. I think that hover color is quite nice, but you can change what it hovers to. And you can also set an animation as well, like that. So let's click on close here. And if you wanna sort of adjust the height of this section, on the bottom right hand side of the section, we can click the section height and you can sort of just pull it and drag it to increase or decrease it. So the next thing that we could do is we can scroll down over here and here is another section. Let's say for example, you wanna move the sections, we can click it and you can click on move up or down. So you can move down and then the section is gonna move down like that. You can also remove sections. Uh, you can also hide or show sections. You can duplicate sections as well. And here we have the section where we display our products. So we can click here, click on edit section. And here basically we're able to select our products and the categories. And you can also select how you want it to display in terms of the layouts, okay? And we can click on close over here. So we can also add a new section. So when you hover over here, we can click on add section. And on the left-hand side, we have some pre-created sort of uh, templates as well for like the about section. You can add a gallery, contact form, footer section, headlines, and you can see what you wanna add. So perhaps you wanna add an about type of section like here, click it, and it's gonna add that in like that, all right? So here we can do like, maybe like change the text to about us. And then we can move the text up like that, change the image and we'll be good to go. So I don't want this section, so I'm gonna delete it. Scrolling down here, this is another section with a hero image, a headline and a button. And here we have another section which basically links to our about page. So if you wanna add other sort of elements, we can click on the plus icon on the left, add element, and here are all the different elements that you can add onto your page. So for example, if we want to add, for example, let's just delete this one here. Let's add a video like that, right? So it's very, very simple to, to use and you can align things quite easily with the sort of um, snap guides like that, okay? And let's scroll down over here. We have the newsletter sign up form as well. So as you can see, you can add that element anywhere on your website. So let's scroll down over here. And we also have a follow us on Instagram. For this Instagram section, it's basically just displaying images. So you can go ahead and edit the images manually. And they've also got a button which basically links to the profile page. So if you wanna connect it to your Instagram feed, we can click on the plus, and then we can drag in the Instagram feed module and just drop it onto the page. And over here, we can click on edit feed, and you can connect it to your Instagram. So it's actually gonna display your photos and your videos that you actually post on your Instagram feed. It's automatically gonna display here. So you can go ahead and do that and connect it and display this feed instead of the images. And you can sort of adjust the size of it as well. So let's go ahead and delete this for now. And scrolling down over here, this is gonna be your footer section. So the bottom of your website. So to edit the styling of the footer, we can click on edit section and we can change the color. And it's basically just like how you edit all the other sections over here. So for example, we can change it to a darker gray or we can even change it to a purple. I'm just gonna keep it a light gray like that. And to edit the module here, we can click into it and edit text. So here we can change it to logo like that or you can drop in an image module and upload the image of your logo. And here we've got the social icons and you can click on edit social icons Basically to connect it, um, essentially all you need to do is just to edit and just paste in your Twitter sort of uh, profile URL or your Facebook URL or your Instagram URL and just save it. And it's gonna link there when people click on that. So on the right hand side, we have some menu items, contact returns, payments and delivery. So this is linking to pages. Now, if you wanna link it to additional pages, what we could do is just do something like 
click on the plus and you can add a text module over here and link it or you can just grab this one over here select it and just duplicate it okay and just move it to where you want it like this let's just duplicate this maybe two more times and just arrange that okay so you can make that look perfect so for example if we want it to link to another page edit text let's just say for example we create a terms and conditions and then here we have perhaps like a privacy and then here we can click on edit text and perhaps this one is a FAQ and what we could do is to link it let's just click on terms and conditions edit text select it and click on link and then if we have the page uh, created already we can click on and select the page from the drop down you can also link to an external web address and you can select it to open in a new tab and then click on save as well so that's the basics of the footer you can also select the footer section and you can also hide it on a specific page as well or show on pages so sometimes this is useful if you want to create like a landing page and you don't want to show the footer you can hide that specifically or you can create a footer a different footer for each page as well so let's scroll back up over here let's make sure we save everything so it's also very important once you've finished the layout of each of your pages you want to click on the mobile styling option here and you want to ensure that the layout looks good on mobile as well so for example it needs a little bit more spacing here so we can just add a little bit more padding for that section so let's just drag that down a little bit so something like that and here perhaps we can move that up a little bit as well you can also click on the elements and you can hide for specific devices as well so for example you may not want to display so much content for mobile devices then you can hide certain elements as well so once you're done just click on save and you can head back here and the next thing i want to show you is how to create your new pages if you want to create a new page and how to adjust your menu to create a new page it's very simple click on add page and then here we can create an empty page or you can select a pre-created layout page so for example terms and conditions we can click it and here we can just enter in let's just for example type in brand name and you can enter in your website address over here uh, website name sorry so con tempo and then click on add page and here we've created the terms and conditions page so if you want to arrange it so for example if you don't want to display it in the main navigation area we can click on the settings gear icon and we can hide from navigation and then it's going to show here so it's going to be a page that people can visit but it's not going to be linked from the top so for example on the footer section we can click it edit text and let's click and select the text over here link and then we can link it to for example the let's type in terms and conditions page like that and click on save and that's going to link to that page but it's also not going to display on the top so let's click back over here and to rearrange the order of the menu item we can click it and we can just drag it and that just rearranges where you want to put it you can also do a drop down so for example if you want the contact page to be dropping down from the about page we can click it and just sort of uh, put it on top of the about page and that's going to indent it and then that's going to create a drop down menu so it's very very simple to do if you want to create a custom link you can also add link over here as well so let's just move that back down over there and let's rearrange this back down over here and let's close that what I want to show you now is how to set up your online store and add in your products so on the left over here we can click on online store and here we can click on manage store so if it's your first time setting up your store you will need to name your store so I'm just gonna call this con tempo and then click on continue I'm gonna select the store country as well as the 
currency and then click on continue. So to add in your products, we can add it in by clicking on products. And then here are some pre-created products on the template website. So if you want to remove it, we can click on the three dots over here and we can just delete it. You can also hide it as well by clicking on this item over here and selecting hidden. So let's head back to products and click on add product. And we're going to select a physical product first. So I'll show you guys how to add that in. And here we can drop in an image. So click on that. Then select the image that we want to upload. So I'm going to select this one, the iPhone clear case and click on open. And here we can just enter in the product title. So what is this product called? So let's just name this ultra clear iPhone case. And for the subtitle, I'm going to put for iPhone models 13, 14 and 15. So this will display under the title and for the ribbon, it's basically going to be like a little ribbon notification thing on the image, which I'll show you. So let's just do, for example, new here, we can paste in a description of the product. Scrolling down here, we can add in the price. So for example, let's do $49. You can also set a discounted or sale price. For example, 39, you can set in a unique identifier code. So I'm just going to leave that empty and you can also set in the weight of the product 0.3 kilograms. And here we can also track the quantity, how many pieces you have in stock. I'm going to put hundred scrolling down over here. This is basically where you can set in the variations for that product. And I'll show you that in a moment. And here is where you can set in the categories. I'll show you that in a moment as well. So click on save to add in your first product. So as you can see, it says the products aren't live yet. So we need to go to the editor and you want to click on save. And hopefully that product has been published. Let's click on our shop and we can click on all products. We can scroll down and we can see if that product is active. And as you can see, this new is the ribbon. So let's click into that. And this one over here is the subtitle. And here we've got the discounted price. We have the quantity selector. We've got the description and you can go ahead and actually build out the sections sort of similar to how you use the builder when we're building out the home page. So you can click on add section and you can build it out that way. So I'll show you that a little bit later on how to change the layout as well. So we're going to go ahead and just save it. Let's head back to the store and add in a variable product. So click on store and click on manage store. And let's just close that. I'll show you how to add in the payments a little bit later. So as you can see, they'll also walk you through what you do need to set up. The most important things I'll walk you through that in a second. Let's click on the products and click on add product. And here I'm going to set in a physical product again, and we're going to set in the images. So I'm going to add in a variable product. So I'm going to add in all these images over here. So let's just add that in and let's just do aluminium. I watch straps and you can put a subtitle and for the ribbon, let's just do sale. And you can also add in a description over here. It's going to leave it empty for now. And here we can scroll down. Okay. So I'm just going to ignore this for now because we're going to set in it for the specific variations. Click on add option. And for the option, we're going to have color as the first option. So here we can set in the color. So for the colors we have, I think we have silver Add. I think we have pink, gold, rose gold. And I think we had a black one as well. And over here we can click on save. So let's scroll back up and check if those are the correct colors. So silver, rose gold, pink, gold, and black scrolling down over here. So you can also add different options as well. For example, if you have a size variation or perhaps a storage variation. So let's just click on manage variations 
and set in the images. Okay, so set them in to match the product image. And then over here, I'm going to select track quantity. And here we can set in the price. So $49, you can set in a discount, you can also set in the weight of the package. And you can also set in the quantity. So I'm going to go ahead and quickly just add those in. Once you're done, you can click on save. And then from here, we can click on save. And once again, the changes aren't saved yet. So let's go ahead and click on editor and let's click on save over here. And then we can go to all the products to view our products, scrolling down. And we have the aluminum watch straps here, click into that. And as you can see, we can select the different variations of the product and it's going to change to the image that you set in specific for that color. Next, I want to show you guys how to add in a digital product as well as set in appointments. So click on online store again, and you can also click on manage products to go directly to your products. And then over here, click on add product and we're going to select digital. So digital products are products which can be downloaded after people have purchased the product. Normally it will be downloaded via email. So they'll be sent an email with the download link. So we can click into that. And here we can drop in an image. Let's navigate back over here. And we're going to upload this image. And for the title, it's just gonna be a healthy cookbook. And you can also enter in a subtitle for the ribbon. I might do a PDF and you can enter in a description over here and we can set in a price. So for example, $29. And for this one, we don't really need to track quantity because it doesn't really have inventory. People can download it unlimited times. So over here, we can upload the file that you want people to download after the purchase. So the link is going to last 48 hours. So let's click on upload files and we're going to upload a PDF and click on open. So for PDFs, you can actually create a lot of PDFs and graphics on Canva.com. That's what I recommend if you're not sure on how to actually create one using Adobe and things like that. So let's go ahead and click on save. And we're basically just added in the digital product. So to add an appointment, what we could do is we can also click on add product and we can click on appointment. So for services and the donations, it's fairly similar to how we've added in the product so far, but the appointment's a little bit different. So we're going to click an appointment and enable. And here we can add in an image. So for example, if you are a hairdresser, we can do that. So let's just do men's haircuts or for the subtitle 30 minutes and ribbon. Let's just try and do popular and we can scroll down here and we can set in a price, for example, $49. And here we can set in a time and a place. So I might just do in store duration, 30 minutes, scrolling down over here. We can set a minimum time for the bookings. Let's just do maybe 12 hours. And here we can set in availability. So we can click on edit and you can choose the days which you are available and then you can add the times which you're available to. So for example, let's say eight to 12, scrolling over here. And then perhaps you might have lunch time. So then you might do one o'clock. So let's select here. And then you can set the time to whichever time that you want. So six o'clock like that. So you can edit them individually and you can also add more times as well, depending on how you want to break it down and click on save. Let's click on save and then click on save here. So let's head back to the editor and we can click on save, then click on preview. Let's click on the shop and scroll down. So I've got the men's haircut over here, the PDF. Let's click into that and we can click on add to bag and then people can select the appointment time here. For example, let's do Wednesday and nine o'clock and people can book. So the checkout is disabled in the preview mode. 
So it'll only be live once we go live with our website. So let's head back over here. So I actually wanted to show you guys how to edit the product layout of your product pages. So you can navigate to one of the products and you can click into the section and then click on edit section. So here we can click on the layout and you can change the basic layout. You can change the alignment as well as the gallery placement as well. And here we can scroll down. You can also change the style. So you can change the text color, the arrow colors on the image. If you have multiple images, you can also change the section color to a image as well. And you can change the button. So for example, you can change the button text to add to cart instead. Or you can change it to, for example, if you're an appointment type of service website, then we could do something like book now and we can change that. So I'm gonna just keep it as add to cart. And you can also change the style of the button. So we can go ahead and scroll down and you can change the color. So the fill color, so let's change it to maybe like a purple color like that. And you can also change the hover color as well. You can change the size of the button change the text color, the border color, and really customize how that looks to a certain degree. And also, do you want to enable the quantity picker? So let's click on close. So that's the basics of changing the layout. You can also scroll down over here and click on add section. And we can choose a section. So for example, if you want to add more benefits to that product, we can use something like headlines or uh, something like the about sections and you can add that in. So you can create, let's say for example, edit text. And this one is like benefit number one. And you could write a little bit about it, have an image. You could also just use all the elements on the left hand side and drag it in. Then you could also add like another section where you might do, for example, testimonials and you could have specific testimonials for that product. Select that and you can add that in. And you can really just create it like what you've created for your home pages. So once you're done, all you need to do is just click on save. And what I wanna show you now is setting in your online store categories, because it's important to sort of organize all your products because sometimes you may wanna display it on other pages of your website. So let's head back to online store, click on manage store, And let's head to categories and we can click on add category. So our first category might be, let's say Apple. So the Apple, the brand, and we can assign products. So you can select sort of multiple products for different categories as well. Let's click on assign products and let's select the Apple ones. Okay. And click on save and then we can save. So another popular category to create is a bestseller or like a top rated. So let's click on add and let's just type best sellers. And here we can assign the best selling products. So for example, we might have these four products and assign, and then we can click on save. So how we can actually display this on our website, we can head back to our site, scroll down to our best sellers. Let's click into this section, edit section, and show in this section, I'm gonna show the Apple products. So as you can see, it's gonna show up, or we can actually select the best sellers, and that's going to populate. So here we can also change the layout of how we wanna display it as well. And you can choose the style, the colors, the pagination, how many products do you wanna display? You can also add the add to bag button so people can buy directly. And yeah, so let's go ahead and click on close and save. So another reason of creating your categories is sometimes you may want to create a category link. So how we would do that is we would go ahead and add pages. So let's click on the pages over here and we're gonna create a new page. So for example, we can create a page for the online store here. And we can use the product list as a template. Let's click on close. And let's close this over here. Over here, we have the section 
So for example, let's edit the section. Let's change it to Apple. And then I might add a new section. So we might do something like a headline. And perhaps let's just do this one over here. Move it up. And then we can just click over here, edit text. I'm going to Apple. And perhaps we don't need this button, so we're going to delete it. We're going to move the section up like this. And we're going to select this text and move it into the middle. Then we're going to go edit section, change the section color to a light gray. And this can be your new category page for your Apple products, right? So to display it on your menu items over here, let's click back over here. And I think this is the page that we created. So let's click on edit and let's click on the settings. So here, I'm going to call this Apple. And what we're going to do is I'm going to select it and I'm going to move it sort of into the shop here, sort of indent it into here like that. And that's going to drop down from the shop page, right? So I'm not quite sure why it's not edited yet. So let's go settings. Okay. If we've got to save it, so Apple save it. Okay. So now it should be called Apple. Let's click on save. Once you've finished making changes, head back to the home page. And another thing that is worth noting is that you can sort of add a single product on your home page. So for example, if you just want to display one product, so let's add a new section and we can select online store and we can add a single product like that, right? And just click on edit section, choose the product that you want to display. Let's say for example, you want to display the men's haircut and you can display it just like that. So another way of doing it is we can close it. What we could do is add section and we can create a blank section. Let's click over here on the plus and we can add it, add to bag like this, edit button, and we can link it to a specific product. So let's just link it to, let's say the men's haircut, right? So this button is linked there. And what we would need to do is probably just drop in a image. Okay. Over here like this, and we can edit image. Perhaps we can replace this image with the haircut. So let's just go to free images. And I'm just going to select perhaps this one over here, add to page, close. And then here people can click on this button and they will be directed to book this, uh, service. Okay. So there are two main things that we need to do before we can start selling. So let's head to the online store and we're going to click on manage store. So we need to set in the store settings for the payments as well as the shipping. So let's click on payments. And all you need to do is to connect it to the different payment gateways, PayPal or Stripe. So generally you would want to create a business account on both of these payment gateways. So let's go ahead and connect it to PayPal. So you can click on that. And if you don't have an account yet, it would also redirect you to sign up for a business account. All you'll essentially need is like your business name and any business numbers that you have registered for. So let's just select this capture here. So here, just enter in your email, select your country and then click on next. So I already have an account here and it's redirected me to sign in. and that has been connected. So let's go back to Hostinger. So we want to make sure that the setup is finished. Let's click on manage again and click on finish setup. Okay. So it redirected me to my PayPal account. I'm going to click on back and then I'm going to, let's just click on save. Okay. So now that it has been enabled, so it's going to be a similar process to set up your Stripe account, which basically allows your website to accept credit cards. So let's click on back to store settings. So your payment settings are done. So the next thing is shipping. So this is if you're selling products which need to be shipped. 
So what we're going to do is they've already created a regular shipping zone. So this could be your domestic shipping zone. So we can click into this. So here for the name, I'm just going to rename it domestic or we can change it to zone one. And here we can add in the countries that we want to be in this zone. So perhaps I might select Australia and I'm going to try to do New Zealand. Okay. So this is going to be part of my domestic zone and we're going to click on save. Then we're going to scroll down to the shipping options. So here we have the regular shipping option. We can click into that and we could do something like standard free shipping. And here we can set in the rate. So it's going to be $0 for the free shipping, but we're also going to set in a condition. So people have to spend more than let's say a hundred dollars before they can get that free shipping. Click on add. And that's the first shipping option. So I'm going to add another one. So we're just going to name this standard. And you can also do something like seven to 10 days like that as well. And for the shipping rate, let's do $10. And here we're not going to enter in any conditions. Click on add. And then we're going to add another one, which might be called express shipping. So this one might be five to seven days. And for the shipping rate, $20 and click on add. So right now we have set up the domestic shipping zone and we've added three shipping options. So let's go ahead and go back over here. So you want to make sure to set up the shipping zones for all the countries that you want to ship to. Otherwise it won't show up in the checkout. So let's click on add another zone. So let's say for example, North America and add country. So we might do United States and then we may add Canada as well and then click on save. So here we can set in a shipping as well. So let's just do express shipping only and it's $30, click on add. So once that is done, you're pretty much ready to start selling. So you can also head back to the store settings over here and you can view all these um, for the taxes. So I'll quickly show you that. Click on the taxes and you can add region. And here we could do something like just Australia or you could do your country and then select your country. And then click on save. Scrolling down here, we can set in the tax name. So in Australia, it's called GST. Tax rate is generally 10% and we can click on save. So that's the basics of setting in the taxes. So what I do recommend is consulting a tax expert once you start making a few sales so you can get all that correct because every country is going to be a little bit different as well. Let's head back over here and I think that's good to go. So you can also set in discounts as well. So for example, if you want to create like a coupon code for your customers, you can do that by clicking on discounts and clicking on add discount. And then here we could do something like Black Friday discount name. So let's just do Black Friday again. And for the discount percentage, we could do 30%. And then you can select all products or specific categories. You can also set in the specific conditions as well and change the active dates. So let's click on save and the discount has been set. So let's head back to edit website and we can click on go live. So if you've clicked on this already, then all you need to do is basically just click on the update button. Okay. So the website now is live. So we can quickly just view our website. Okay. So that is looking great. So right now that is pretty much all you need to get started with your online store. So what I want to show you now is just a few more things, for example, like adding a blog, configuring the SEO settings, as well as how to translate your website and set up your emails. So to add a blog, you want to navigate to the left hand side and click on the pencil icon and writing a blog is very good for a website to basically attract visitors to your website by creating content that people are searching for. So we're going to go ahead and click on start a blog. So these are the template blog posts which have been added already. So you can always click on add a new post to add a new blog post. So what we're going to do is just go ahead and edit the existing ones that they've created 
and then just click on edit. So here we can click into the section and we can edit the blog header. So you can change the layout as well as the style by selecting these options here. For example, if you want to remove the description, you can. So let's just close that for now. And we're going to edit the post title. So click on the pencil. So here we can add in our post title. So I'm just going to quickly generate some content on ChatGPT. Let's just copy over the title. And then we're going to paste it in. Here we can put in a blog description. And here we can add post author. So you can do like Hogan Chua. And you can also set the post date as well as schedule it. So you want to scroll back up and you want to add your featured image. So here, select image, upload files, select the blog post image you want to upload, open, and then click on select. And here we can select the category or add the category, sorry. So click on select categories, scroll down, add new category. So perhaps this one might be fashion and then click on save. And that's the basics of adding in the title. So we can scroll down here and add in the content. So again, we can use the elements and drag in each of these elements. So right now they have the image element. So we can go ahead and edit image, replace image, select the same image, or you can change it. And here we can add in the post content. So I'm going to increase the section height just a little bit for now and click in the edit text over here. And I'm going to copy over some text. So let's just copy over this text over here. Select this and paste in the text. So here we can basically just edit and format it accordingly. And you can also add in links. For example, you can select the text and you can link it to any page that you want. You can bold it, you can change the heading styles as well, as well as the fonts. So that's the basics of adding in a blog post. And once you're done, we can click on save and we can head back to the home page. So I want to show you guys how to display it on any page. So let's say for example, we want to display it on the bottom, add section, click on blog, and then select the blog post to display just like that. So this is the blog post that we've added in and these ones are the templates. So once we're done, click on save. Next, we're going to configure the SEO settings. So basically optimizing your website for the search engines. So click on the gear icon here and we can click on SEO. So here we're going to enter in the business name or your brand name. So for example, Contempo and then click on next step click on next and here we can enter in a brief page description. So once you're done, click on next step and here we're going to select three main keywords for our website. So high quality furniture, decor in Australia, and let's do free delivery. Next step. So from that information that we've provided, they've basically used AI to generate a SEO optimized title as well as a SEO optimized meta description for Google. So this is the title and this is the description. You can actually go ahead and edit that as well, but I think it kind of looks good already. So I might just change this one to Contempo and then click on finish. So that's the basics of the SEO page settings for the home page. Now, what I do recommend is actually updating it all for your products as well. So let's click on save first. Let's navigate to the store here. And here are your products. So what you want to do is you want to click on the gear icon and click on the SEO settings and edit the SEO settings for each of your products, as well as all your important pages as well. So once you've done that, then we can also click on this translate tab here. And this will basically allow you to manually translate your website. So for example, we can set in the starting language. So for example, English is our main language for our website. So we can add another language. So perhaps we could set it to be French and click on add language. So right now we have the default, which is English and then French. So then let's say, for example, we select the French language. So right now it's currently on there 
And what we need to do is actually manually edit it. So you can manually translate it. So for example, let's copy this and we can paste this in here. Let's change the size to perhaps 78 and then we can change the color. Okay, so as you can see, if we change it back to English, it's going to change back to English, go to French, it's gonna change. So there is currently a limitation right now where for the online store pages, they aren't translatable. So I'm sure they'll add that in the future, but right now that is a limitation. So once you're done translating your entire page for the language, then you wanna click on save and then update your website. So let's go through the final settings on your website. So on the gear icon on the bottom left, we can click on it and click on general settings. So here we can set in a fab icon, which is basically a little icon for your tabs. So we can click over here and click on add image, upload files. And we're gonna add this fab icon over here. And generally it should be a PNG file and it should be like a square format. Click on open and then we can select. Scrolling down over here, we've got the link preview image. So this is the image that people see when they share your website. So for example, we can add image and let's add the hero image and then click on open. Then we're going to select and we can also add the cookie banner as well. So for the integrations, this is where you can connect it to things such as the Facebook pixel, your Google tag manager and other applications as well. For the analytics is basically going to show you how many visitors are coming to your website and the form submissions over here are basically the contact form submissions as well as the subscribe forms will be listed over here. So let's go ahead and close that. So what I want to show you now is how to create a free professional email in Hostinger. To create a free email on Hostinger, you want to log into the H panel. So over here on the top, click on emails. And here we're going to set up the free email service. So click on setup and select the domain, click on confirm. And we're going to select the free Tizen email, click on select. So over here we can set the email name. So for example, it could be hello, contact, sales, or your name. And then just set in a password, set in a recovery email address. Scroll down over here and just click on create a new account. So over here, we can access the webmail using this link. So we can click on this and you can just bookmark this onto your browser. So when you wanna check your email, then you just need your username or your email here and then your password to just log in. So click on login, confirm set in your name, click on next. And I'm just gonna click on, I'll do this later. I'll do this later as well. Okay, so this is the inbox and this is where you can send email and manage your emails. So let's head back over here. And once you're done, make sure to save and update your website. And if we view the website over here, and this is our completed e-commerce store. So that is pretty much it for this tutorial. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed and found some value in it. If you have any questions, you can drop it in the comment section below and I'll try to get back to you guys as soon as possible. Thanks.